circuit. Keep the wings level until the glider gently rises off the ground. When you're ready to release, signal the tow aircraft by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Directly behind the tow aircraft at all times, both horizontally and vertically. Excellent, you are maintaining a safe position. Let's keep directly behind the tug as it turns. Approaching the designated altitude of 3,000 feet. Upon release, gently turn to the right as the tow aircraft turns left. Release the cable. Excellent. Very well done. Today, we're going to practice using a winch to launch the DG-1001 into the air. Compared to a tow plane launch, a winch will get us airborne much faster, but with a lower release altitude. Once we give the go signal, the winch will rapidly accelerate us. Be sure to keep the wings level until the glider lifts off. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Rotate. Almost at the top, level off and when you hear a distinct change of sound from the winch, release the cable. 
The cable has automatically back released. It's a lot to focus on at once. Keep it up and you'll get the hang of it quickly. It can be tricky to get right, but you did well. Keep practicing and you'll improve quickly. Welcome to your advanced winch launch training. Keep the wings level, rotate into the climb at the correct moment, and maintain a safe speed and trajectory. A winch launch demands the highest level of awareness and ability to appropriately react as quickly as possible. When you are ready to release, signal the winch operator by moving your rudder left and right a few times. Excellent, you handled that perfectly. We are too high to land ahead. Turn back and fly alongside the runway. When safe, turn and line up in preparation to land. was a simulated cable break intended to prepare you for flying solo. If you keep flying like that, you'll be right up there with the best of them. Very well done.
Today, you'll experience soaring in a glider, what many aviators consider to be the purest form of flight. Unlike powered aircraft, a glider pilot must adjust altitude to control airspeed. To increase airspeed, push the stick forward. Pulling back on the stick will lower airspeed. Maintaining constant airspeed in a glider requires the pilot to frequently and carefully adjust stick input and elevator trim. Let's see how the glider feels at different airspeeds. With gliders, expect a delay of one to two seconds from control input to change in speed. Let's increase airspeed to 167 kilometers per hour. Gently push the stick forward to pitch the nose down as you observe the airspeed indicator. At 167 kilometers per hour, pull back gently to maintain speed and trim the elevator so that the glider maintains 167 kilometers per hour without pilot input.
Today, you'll experience soaring in a glider, what many aviators consider to be the purest form of flight. Unlike powered aircraft, a glider pilot must adjust altitude to control airspeed. To increase airspeed, push the stick forward. Pulling back on the stick will lower airspeed. Maintaining constant airspeed in a glider requires the pilot to frequently and carefully adjust stick input and elevator trim. Let's see how the glider feels at different airspeeds. With gliders, expect a delay of 1 to 2 seconds from control input to change in speed. Let's increase airspeed to 167 kilometers per hour. Gently push the stick forward to pitch the nose down as you observe the airspeed indicator. At 167 kilometers per hour, pull back gently to maintain speed and trim the elevator so that the glider maintains 167 kilometers per hour without pilot input. reduce our airspeed. Bring the glider to 102 kilometers per hour. To reduce airspeed, gently lift the nose by pulling back on the stick. You need less input compared to pushing the stick forward. Leading off our airspeed will take a few moments. Once you're at 102 kilometers per hour, maintain that airspeed at first by stick input and then adjust trim so no input is necessary. We'll now take a look at how to maneuver the glider in turns. Unlike powered aircraft, gliders require considerable rudder input to begin a turn. A vital indicator for turns is the red yaw string on the center of the canopy. We always want to keep it centered. Then we use just the right amount of rudder and ailerons for coordinated flight. To center a deflected string, Apply aileron in the same direction, or rudder in opposite direction of the deflected string. Let's see what happens to the yaw string if we try to bank the glider without any rudder input. Keep the rudder centered and slowly move the stick to the left, then to the right while observing the yaw string. glider to straight and level flight again. Let's see what happens if we use the rudder pedals only. Apply left rudder followed by right rudder without touching the stick. Just like before, watch what happens to the string.
Establish straight and level flight again. Now that you understand the use of the yaw string, let's perform a circle maneuver. To roll the glider, apply both aileron and rudder inputs simultaneously in the same direction. Hold a bank angle of 45 degrees and keep the yaw string centered with the rudder throughout the turn. The glider will begin turning. To maintain the nose on the horizon, you might need to pull back slightly on the stick. Roll the ailerons and rudder opposite of your turn to a wings level attitude. Let's attempt a left 360, then level the wings and perform a right 360. Try to keep the yaw string centered while turning. Now, let's return to the airport. You've covered the basics and your skills will improve with practice. You've done well, and with more practice, you'll have these skills mastered. Pilots sometimes need to reduce altitude without gaining excessive speed. Slipping is a technique to accomplish this. This technique can even allow a pilot to land a sailplane without air brakes, crucial if they break or freeze during flight. To perform a slip, the pilot holds the nose to one side with rudder input while lowering the opposite wing with ailerons. You may use either side for slipping, but it's easier to control if you apply aileron into the crosswind. We have a left side crosswind. We need to lower the left wing with ailerons while yawing the nose to the right with the rudder. I will advise when to start the slip maneuver during your final approach. For now, fly closer to the runway. Commence the slip now. Start with right rudder. 
Now, apply left aileron to keep the glider on track. Now, in addition to slipping, apply full air brakes. The combination will quickly bring us onto our needed glide path. Be aware that the glider will tend to speed up during this maneuver. Use your elevator to maintain approach speed. See how quickly we're approaching the normal glide path? Let's leave the slip now. Good job. See how simple and efficient the slip is? Return rudder and aileron to center position. Keep the air brakes out as required for approach. Now continue the approach. We still have left crosswind and need to align with the runway. This is done by the same technique, but with less control input. Use only enough right rudder input to align the glider's nose with the runway. Apply the necessary amount of left aileron input to keep the sailplane's path aligned with the runway. For track correction, use your aileron only. Keep the nose aligned with the runway with your rudder. Now it's your task to carry out the crosswind landing in this way. Slipping approaches take time to master, but are a great way to nail your landings. You now know the basics. You are on the right learning track. Let's train further to increase your proficiency. Glider pilots need to continuously be on the lookout for the next thermal or other source of lift to stay aloft. Thermals are small diameter parcels of rising air. Gliders must fly in tight circles to stay within them. Cumulus clouds, which typically resemble cotton balls, are a good indicator of thermals as they often form above them. Thermals suited for lift often require pilots to search under a few cumulus clouds. The variometer is a vital tool for soaring. This device indicates a sailplane's rate of ascent and descent with audible tones. After familiarization with the variometer's tones, you'll be able to know your climb rate without referencing other instruments. 
A variometer indicates a climb with an interrupted high pitch tone and descent with a continuous low pitch tone. As we approach the cloud, listen closely to the variometer and be ready to turn in when its tone indicates lift. Okay, the variometer is indicating lift. Turn in and begin circling. Roll into a 45 degree bank and complete at least one circle. Gauging a thermal strength typically requires completing at least one full turn within it. for a thermal under a neighboring cloud. Now we'll work on keeping your circles tight and smooth. Two important rules to follow are, keep your speed low between 93 and 102 kilometers per hour. Maintain a constant altitude, keeping a continuous 45 degree bank and the nose of the glider slightly above the horizon. Continue circling, maintaining a 45 degree bank angle and an airspeed between 93 and 102 kilometers per hour. the heights without an engine is an exhilarating experience of pure aviation freedom. You are proficient enough to practice these skills solo. Go ahead and continue perfecting these maneuvers in a single seater. Great flying. will generate good lift. The ridge extends over many miles, but we'll only use a short portion for introduction. Let's fly directly to the ridge and follow it in a southwesterly direction. We have a tailwind on our route to the ridge, so we'll get there quickly. As soon as you recognize ascending air during our approach to the ridge, begin a right turn. One of 
the cardinal rules of ridge soaring is to avoid the ridge's lee sides due to downdrafts that often form in that region. Try to maintain as high a rate of speed as possible while flying close to terrain as it affords the most escape options. Increase the speed until the vertical speed becomes zero, but stay below the yellow arc. Steer the aircraft far enough into the crosswind to avoid drift toward the lee side. We'll turn back in approximately five minutes when we're a beam of Belleville. Meanwhile, watch the vertical speed. If it indicates a constant descent, we should try flying closer or farther from the ridge. Watch for other traffic. Currently, we need to give way because the ridge is to our left-hand side. When traffic is approaching, turn right far enough to allow the traffic to pass, then maneuver back to the ridge. Beam Belleville, let's turn back. Remember to turn away from the ridge.
work. With more training, you'll continue to improve.